Hey guys, this is Danny with Pwn CNC and I'm here to install the Z independent bracketing system onto my Millwright. I'm going to assume you've already gone through the preparation and kind of know what all the parts are. We're going to just jump right into it and we're going to take our um, left ear. So real quick, this is the left side. This is the right side as you're facing the machine. So we're going to take our left ear, which basically has this extra plastic here on the left side. Um, it's also got this little this curved in indentation that goes up towards the top. We're going to take that and one of the track brackets, and most importantly, the screw or the holes um, go right along the side on the outside of the carriage. So put that plastic right up against it like this. Hold it up there. That curved piece should curve right up on the left top edge of that track. On the back side. We're going to take one of these uh, M5 by um, or M5 locking nuts. We're going to just drop that right in there. Now the insulation, uh, the the uh, nylon, um, should be on the outer towards the plastic, with the metal part towards the uh, the track here. We're going to take one of our shorter button head screws. We're going to drop that right into the top right corner, and using a um, looks like a three millimeter hex wrench. We're going to just drive that right in. Don't use a, a driver, an electric driver. Um, you will likely uh, strip something or damage some parts. These are plastic. We want to treat them with care. Um, they are designed to break in the case you run in your clamping system, your bracketing into some clamps or something like that. Um, we want that plastic to break, not your boot or your, uh, your, you know, your aluminum tracks or your machine. So that's why they're made of plastic. They're made to absorb. But we've got one side. We're going to go ahead and start the other side. Take our track, our left, our, I'm sorry, our right ear, which has our uh, curve up towards the top. Tracks on the right side. We're going to take our short screw here. Drop that into that top left into there. Take a nylon locking nut, drop that in there, and just kind of screw them together so that it tightly holds that piece of plastic onto the track. Oh. <laughs> it, tr it slipped on me. <laughs> All right, so. We've got our tracks, um, both tracks. They're basically going to be sitting like this up against your machine, but we're going to set those aside for a second. We need to pay our attention to the parts, the two um, unusual shaped parts here named R and R. <laughs> so we're going to take our two uh, socket head, long socket head screws. We're going to drop those into place first. Set that aside for a second. Take our nylon locking nuts, a couple of them, drop them into the R piece here. The nylon should be up here uh, on the same in the same direction as the uh, the R side. Now the R in this case points to the back. So when you're looking at it from the back of the machine you should see the R symbol and that goes on the right side. Hold your um, hold those two locking nuts in place. They just um, they just drop right in so they could fall out if you turn them over like this. And we're going to join both of these using an M4 um, uh, hex wrench. So we're just going to get it started. We're not actually going to tighten it down through. Uh, we just started it into the threading. We haven't actually gone into the nylon yet. Um, this means that both parts can be separated just uh, slightly so that we can get them right here in between the machine. Now let me jump over to the other side um, on the left side and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So again, we're going to take our socket head screws. There it goes. I'm going to take a couple of locking uh, M5 locking nuts with the nylon pointing in the same side as the uh, L. And of course holding those in place, the L will be pointed towards the back. I'm going to take our, um, our L bracket here, drop that in, and just kind of get those screws started again. Once you feel that nylon, just kind of stop, um, pull out, and we're going to tighten it down in just a second. So now that we've got some uh, some shimmy there to the um, to these parts, some space there, we're going to take it and this little loop part right here that actually fits right around your eccentric nut. 
So we're going to slide that right into place. It's just going to drop right in there. Um, hold real or hold it up against the 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 plate, and then you can take your M4 or yeah M four millimeter hex driver, and you can uh, tighten it up. So you're going to want to tighten this by hand again. Don't use a uh, hex driver. We don't want the plastic breaking. So we're going to hold that really tight and close to this machine. Now, once we've got it slightly tightened down so that it's not really moving anywhere, we're going to jump over to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. Just to get it started. We're not going to tighten it down just yet. Um, there's one additional part we want to put in there. We just want to keep those in place for now. Now, this is what I call a brace. Um, it's got a giant front on there, and it's actually facing towards you. There's some indentations for uh, the screws, or I'm sorry, the, the washers that are holding your uh, your X motors plate on there. So those washers will kind of fit right inside there. These little square pieces on the end, they will actually drop down into our curved pieces, the L, uh, the L and the R pieces here. You're going to take that brace and you're just going to kind of slide it. We can slide it in from either side, but we're going to slide it right down the back side of your plate. So it should, the front should be making, uh, facing the uh, back side of the plate. Take that in, just kind of position that where it drops down into these two pieces here. Just push it down in there, make sure it's nice and well seated. Um, it should uh, snap right around your plate here, so it should hold it really nicely in place. Once that is sitting there, then you can take your hex driver and go ahead and tighten down these screws the rest of the way. Now remember, hold the uh, hold it in place because the top may be held by that brace, but the bottom is still kind of loose. So we want to make sure that we hold that in place so that it doesn't rotate or twist on us as we're putting it into its final position. Now you could, um, if you'd like, put a piece of painter's tape on either side so that it has something to grip into, um, and that's just wrap it right around the, the edge here of your plate, um, just so that it can give something to grip it to. It's not necessary. Um, I personally don't use it, but I have heard it can help um, with slippage if you have any issues there. Now that brace will help both parts from separating. So that'll help, the brace will help hold everything together this way. Now, we're gonna take our uh, big plate, or one of our uh, track assemblies, we're gonna drop it right into the top screw there, and, yep, using our other hex wrench, we're gonna set it right up against the machine here. It should be pretty flush right along here. Just kinda tighten it up in there. Um, it will drop in. You will be threading into plastic, so again, use your, uh, well, it's even more important this time, um, tighten these up by hand. Don't use a driver. You could strip the plastic, and if you do, you'll need another piece of a, uh, you'll need another uh, a replacement there, and I, I've got those available on the website, but just tighten these up by hand, please. <laughs> All right, so we've got there we go. Just a nice taut turn. It shouldn't it shouldn't wiggle too much if you put a little force on it this way. It may wiggle as you're going as you're twisting it this way, but back and forth it should be exceedingly solid. Now, once the boot is in place um, in the arms, there'll be locking pins that'll kind of help hold everything together, um, especially down here. So it'll help with that with that side to side wiggle. But that front to back wiggle is what we don't want to uh, to happen because that's where the hose comes down into the boot. And the boot basically has pressure pushing on the back side. So we don't want these things twisting front to back so that it can hold the weight of that hose. So we're gonna take our other bracket here and you'll notice that I'm putting it into this top screw, this top right screw and this bottom right screw. Uh, in this uh, bracketing on the left side, we did the top left and the bottom left. So I'm going to pop both of those in. Again, the M3 driver. Just going to drop it right into place on our uh, 
start screwing it into place. Now, you are screwing into plastic again, so don't use a driver, but you could, if you'd like, use some um, Loctite or something like that. That might help the uh, plastic hold better. Um, believe it or not, if you don't plan to uh, remove the brackets, because, I mean, once they're installed, they're good, um, you could actually use a uh, super glue <laughs> As you, on, on the threads, on the tips of the threads, and that's a good bonding agent for this uh, plastic we're using here. So I'm going to reach over with my left hand and just kind of make sure that that side there is flush. Um, again, just like this side, just make sure it's flush. Um, just give it a couple of good squeezes um, or rotations to put it down to torque. There we go. So now our bracketing is in place. We're ready to move on to our, uh, to our um, support arms. So I'm sure you've seen on the uh, preparation page, um, you do have the uh, support arm. And we oh, should be doing the other side actually. Let me switch over to that side here. So you have a track nut. That's what this guy is, little T-shaped thing. That actually slides right into the back side of the brackets. That sits right in there. Um, it, it, it does fall out, so you will want to wait until you're ready. Um, but here is the uh, arm. You've got the uh, track part slides right up and down here with the leg of the of the boot um, pointing backwards, or of the, of the tr support arm pointing backwards. So you can put your uh, your thumb screw here. <laughs> it's kind of late. I'm kind of running low on a on brain power here, but um, I'm assuming you've already assembled the bottom part using a, uh, I believe this is a 20 millimeter screw, a uh, socket head screw. Just drop that in from the, from the back side like this. And then the M5 locking nut is right up here and they screw together and kind of hold the bottom track right into place along this piece here. So once we have that, we're going to take my uh, the track nut, drop that in, can just kind of hold it up about an inch or so. Um, of course, I've got a extra stock material on here, so things don't fall down into the tracks, but I'm going to lift it up a little higher and just kind of get it started. Now I can hold hold the uh, hold it all together. It kind of sandwiches in between this track here. So we're going to spin that up, tighten that down. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. We've got the, uh, the track. Um, the track side goes here, the thumb screw goes right through it. The bottom leg piece uh, points backwards um, with the socket head screw and the M5 screw there. So I'm going to hold our track nut into place. Press in and get this threaded in. Now the heads of these thumb screws are made available so that you can use a hex driver to kind of tighten that into place if you're having any kind of trouble. But they're, they're built in such a way that all you gotta do is just twist them and, and they slide up and down. When you first get this, um, these, are, these are kind of stiff. It, it may take a little bit of effort to put that in and up and down. Um, if you'd like, you can use some, a metal file or something on the inside of this um, plastic arm piece here. Just so you kind of shave that in so you can give it a little bit of room. We don't want to shave too much. We want that um, a nice tight fit, especially whenever we go to tighten it down. Um, let me get this stock out of the way. And then, of course, I'm assuming you've already followed the instructions for building your boot. Uh, this is the version 3. Uh, I've got my hose adapter um, someplace. <laughs> um, I've got my wings on there. You'll notice kind of the placement where I've put my wings here. There are several screws, uh, in inserts, heat inserts, along this track so that you can move this wing forward or backward because your primary goal is to make sure that your bit and your router sit perfectly in the center of this uh, of the circle here. And that applies for the, uh, the version 2 and the version 4 of, that use the Z independent bracketing systems. <laughs> so I've got my boot. I can slide it in from the front or the back. Um, there are a couple extra screws that you can actually screw up on the back side or the front side depending on which way you want to slide your boot into place. I often just leave them out because I'm switching either between a version 4 or version 2 or 3 or whatnot. 
Um, so I like to slide, be, have the ability to slide the boot in from the front or the back, doesn't matter. And then of course I use locking pins to just drop right down in and hold that boot, you know, mechanically lock that boot into place so that it can't slide out into the tracks. But no, that the magnets I use are exceedingly strong, so they shouldn't they shouldn't cause you any problems. But just in case the boot bumps into a clamp or something, you're all set. And again, just loosen both sides. Just kind of slide it up or down. Um, once you do this a little a couple of times, it'll get really loose, <laughs> so that you can uh, so you can then just tighten it down and you're good to go. Um, there you go. You've just installed. Oh, I did forget one thing. So I've already had this installed. Completely forgot about that, but you're going to want to use your uh, two screws. We're going to be relocating your uh, proximity switch from the right side over here. We're going to move it over here to the left side. Now, on the left side, um, I've provided a bracket here uh, that just kind of snaps right down into place. You just kind of hold it in position and just kind of gently tap it with a rubber mallet or something that snaps right down into place um, right over your linear rail here. And of course the wires just kind of float right here so that they're out of the way. And as your carriage comes up, and I probably should turn this on just so that it's easier to, uh, to demonstrate, but let me slide this up a little bit. So as your carriage, your Z carriage comes up, it will trigger your switch um, right here on the left side of your carriage so that it's nice and tucked in out of the way instead of having the uh, the big plastic metal or the metal uh, arm sticking out and all that. So that kind of brings it in, tightens it up, cleans up that space there so that it's a nice tight fit. Um, these brackets do not take any or do not widen your carriage because you do have the uh, large um, V wheels here. So they should easily slide right up against the edge of the machine and just barely um, um, not hitting these screws that are holding your Y uh, v wheels on and the same with the other side so um, yeah if you have any problems uh, reach out to info at pwncnc.com and i'm happy to help you again um, this is daniel at pwncnc remember don't just own your cnc dominate it